Hello students, welcome to the session of Civil Engineering, Society and Global Impact. We are moving to the new module which is known as Environmental Traditional and Futuristic Methods. Now let's discuss about a bit into the environmental factors. Here, environmental factor means we are going to majorly talk about the solid waste management which we are everyday generating. The waste which we are everyday generating in our domestic life and also in the industrial life also. Now let's discuss about which are the methods can be useful, what can be done with the waste which we are generating and what can be useful in the futuristic innovations in our field that is into the construction field if possibly we can arrange into that field. Right? Now you can see here, I would like to draw your attention, you can see here the slide background which shows us that the environmental waste, how it is generated, what can be done towards it. You might have heard of different methods which are used that is known as traditional and even the futuristic methods. Futuristic methods are the new methods which are developing right now and can be used and applicable to our solid waste which we are generating. Now we all know that in day to day life we are generating tons and tons of solid waste. What we are doing with that? What can be done with that? What are the methods? So basically you are going to learn here about in this module that what are the methods of it. Even we are also going to discuss about the purification techniques of water which we are drinking every day and also we are going to see about the waste water treatment right which is the major topic related to our day to day life. Now let's move further. Basically solid waste management. Solid waste management is the waste which we are collecting from the house that is door to door collection. Right? We have to dispose it in a proper way. If we are not disposing it in a proper way, it may create some hazardous things to our life that is the towards the human being. Right? So we need to do properly. Now let's see what are the solid waste management objectives. Why we need to do that? Actually to remove discarded materials from the inhabited places in a timely manner. To prevent the sparse of disease, minimize the likelihood of fire, to dispose the refuse in such a manner so as to minimize the hazardous environment. Right? Any disease can be drawn from that waste. Even it can be hazardous to our environment. So it is very much necessary to do the solid waste management. Now let's see solid waste management activities. Actually how it is collected, what it can be done, how can be done and what are the methods related towards it. Right? So basically there are three steps if we can see in detail that is collection, disposal and recycling. These are the three major steps we need to take into the management of solid waste. Why and how and which are the methods right now traditionally we are implementing is the major question. Because question of designing, question of collecting the designing uh, material that what are the things we need to do for the collection of materials that is the solid waste. We need to see the finance related to it from the governing body. So let's discuss that how this activity is managed. Now let us see the hierarchy of solid waste. What is the hierarchy of solid waste? That is what we have already discussed, the collection, then we need to do the disposal and then we need to do the recycling process, right? Now look at the figure which I have shown here, that is firstly generation, storage, collection and it has three things that is transfer and transport, processing, incineration, compositing, recovery and cycling, recycling and lastly it is the method and major impact of disposal. Now let us see the traditional method of disposal of solid waste. Which are the traditional method? This you might have heard in. First is open dumping. What is open dumping actually? Now here I would like to recall an example that you might all of you have heard or you might have seen that. You have seen every day the governing body is collecting the waste from your house and that collection is transferred towards the dumping site. Where are the dumping site? The dumping sites you have seen here in Ahmedabad. If I would like to give you an example, if you can recall it out, who are staying here is the example of Pirana site. Right? So near Pirana, you have seen old commode area. You have seen that that is the uh, extension of SP Ring Road. Now you have seen that there is a open dumping site. There are the layers of waste which is collected in day-to-day -day collection center from Ahmedabad city. What are they doing? This is a very crude and insanitary method of refuse disposal 
right? It consists of dumping the solid waste in some selected areas. That is our selected area in the Ahmedabad city. Right. So this is what we are going to learn that if we do in the open dumping, what will happen towards it? It generates some gas, it generates some hazardous materials from the waste which is collected. And what next steps should be done towards that? Now let's discuss about sanitary landfilling or controlling controlled tipping method. Right. This is what we are actually using. In this method, diffused Disposal waste is carried out and dumped in low lying area under engineering operations. Now what we are doing into it? We are just collecting towards it. Now look at the figure. We are collecting the waste. Then what we are doing? We are making the layer wise layer and we are giving some treatment towards that. So it does not create any hazardous environment in that area. Right? So what we are doing it? We are filling it with the sand. We are filling it with some compacted solid waste which are just compacted. No air is provided towards that. And then we are doing what? We are providing some air that is aeration. In some area we are not providing air and we are saying it what properties of the material is changed. So that is known as actually sanitary land filling. The way just open dumping we are just keeping the material towards that the rubbish towards that. But in this we are giving some of the other treatment which is already been used and which is traditional. So any hazardous thing we can remove it out and we can discard it. Now I have made here the advantages and disadvantages. No plant is required, simple and economical. What are the disadvantages? Proper site may not be available. Yes, wind direction may not be favorable. We need to see towards that also. If it damages any gases from that, we need to see the wind direction also. Because it can affect a lot to the people who are residing in the nearby areas. Difficult to cover large area because this is just a traditional method which we are implementing and we are seeing what happening towards that. Now let's see of various methods of solid waste management. Here SWM means solid waste management. Now these are also the traditional method but since so long we are using these methods properly. Please give attention towards this. These methods are important to understand. Right now why are this importance given to the solid waste management because now you see that today's generation is going on much and much on the e-waste management. What is e-waste actually? The electronic waste. If I take one sector. Similarly, the domestic waste is also coming up in day to day life. But domestic waste can be used in one or the other processes. Right. Even the broken glass can be used. Even the broken plastic bottle can be recycled and can be used again. Right. Even the plastic waste can be used in the construction field, which we have proved right now. We can use that things. But the solid waste, which I can talk here and give you a live example is of the e-waste. What we do with the mobile phones, which we are not using actually. We drain it out. Right. We don't do much R&D towards it. But yes, this is the major question right now. We need to look about. Why? Because e-waste is the major question. The smartest thing starting from the low community to the high standard community to the upper class middle community, everybody is using some of the other gadget towards that. Right? So it will be the major question right now coming up in our society. So these are the methods actually we are using it for disposal of such type of rubbish also. So first of all in that let us discuss the first method which is minute shredding and pulverization. What is that shredding and pulverization is the material is the machine which do the shredder of the material which is actually a solid. So with that what we do we do the grinding of the material which we have collected which the waste is collected then we do the shredding and then we do what we remove the material which is hazardous towards the land right and we do the dispose of it. So basically we are doing the crushing of it which is known as shredding and pulverization may reduce the volume by 40 percentage. So we reduce the volume by it. and hence it is not commonly used in India. Municipal solid waste is usually achieved by hammer mills. Right. So we are just using it pulverization and shredding machine in that we can just reduce the volume of it. Right. And we diffuse the things which are not required into it, which is not shredded is being disposed into the different site or different collection material. Let's move to the second method, which is known as compositing. What is composting? Here, factors affecting is the temperature, pH value, air circulation. There are three types of compositing we can do by trenching, right? First, we are going to discuss by trenching. 
mechanical and open window compositing. Now let's discuss what is compositing by trenching. Trenching means the pit. We make and into that we do the composite. Into that we fill up the trenching and we look towards that what are the properties changing towards the environment. Right. So you can see here in this method trench of 4 to 10 meter long, 2 to 3 meter wide and 0.7 to 1 meter deep are excavated with a clear spacing of 2 meter. These measurements are important to know about this techniques. Towards that we see that it is filled with refuse in the garbage layer of 15 centimeter. On the above of each layer 5 centimeter thick sandwiching layer of nice soil animal dung is spread in a semi form. So we are just trying it if it is closed for 2 to 3 days and if air is provided also with that what is the change of the property towards it can be known to this method which is known as compositing by trenching right this is again the traditional method. Let's discuss open window compositing. In this method large proportion of mineral matters like dust, stone, broken glass pieces etc are first removed from the refuse. This refuse is then dumped on the ground form of 0.6 meter to 1 meter high, 6 meter long and 1 to 2 meter wide piles at about 60 meter moisture content, 60 percentage moisture content, right. So what we are doing this, in this we are refusing and we are discarding the hard material from the waste and then we are making a layer of it and then we are providing what, we, we are providing 60 percent of moisture content. Now when you are providing the moisture into it, again the properties will change. Right. So there is a difference between open trenching and there is a difference between this. When you provide a moisture and when you provide an air, there will be two proper and different methodologies into it. Right. So this is uh, the traditional method which we are right now using. Now let's see the other methods of solid waste which is mechanical composite. It is a time consuming process and very laborious. In this method, stabilization is explained by the mechanical devices turning the Composite. By this method, refuse is stabilized only within 3 to 6 days. The refuse is received at the plant. Now, this is the plant theory, means it requires the plant. You can see here, I have shown here the figure. How will be the collection? What it will be done? What are the parameters regarding it? Segregation is done by hand picking on smaller plants and by mechanical devising on larger plants. Remove of paper, rags, non ferrous metal on large objects. So these are the methods which you use. It means we remove the hard materials from the waste which are collecting. And then we are grinding and mixing. And then it is a digestion. And then it is a market preparation. And then we used to do what? We used to see that what happens towards it. Segregation means we segregate the materials towards it. Like fine materials, ash, particles of garbage mechanically is prepared and the remaining is shredded and pulverized. And then we ultimately do the landfilling towards it. But we are just changing the properties of solid waste with this method. This is not much more into the use because it requires more, more of work power, manful powers and it requires a laborious thing. It is not the thing which is skilled and can be used. But we are just trying the different methods. So composite actually has three that is trenching, open window and the mechanical composite. Right. Three are the different things which we are implementing onto the solid waste and we are seeing that how is the waste material properties are changed. Now next is the very important topic which is known as incineration. Incineration, what is that actually? Basically this is used for the hospital waste and the industrial plant waste. Right. So here you can see that before incineration process is taken place, inert material like earth, broken glass metals are separated so as to reduce the load on the method on the machine which we are using. Heat is generated by burning the dry refuse may be utilized for rising the steam power. Yes, now with this we have innovated that we can generate something from it. How it is possible? You can see here the figure what I have shown here. The storage pit is shown. The material is thrown towards that. Now you can see the head which is removing the hard materials from it. That is over crane. Cutoff of gates are shown. Now in this material high heat is provided so material will start burning towards it. Ash is formed. You can see here electrostatic precipitator is shown. What is that? We change the property of it and we see that how much heat is produced towards it. And lastly is the gases which are emitted. 
right but we are trying that that are the harmful gases which should be in such a way that it does not create anything to the environment right so now let's see in detail what is the process towards it solid waste reaching the incinerator plant is generally quite wet in spite of their high calorific value it is generally found that it is necessary to dry them out before drying right electrostatic precipitator are installed in the incineration plant to reduce air pollution caused by furnace gases right so this is how it is been taken care of it right that is why electrostatic precipitators are kept now large incinerators are called destructors and they can burn up to 100 to 150 tons of refuse per hour so incineration is basically what we are burning the waste which we are collecting but in a sense the gas which is generated should not affect our environment this is highly used right now in today's technology and today's era because hospital waste is generated a lot and that can create hazardous gases which can affect the human beings life so incineration is visually required even the metal uh, production industries also use this type of plants so that they cannot generate any hazardous things towards the human society now the other method which is very important is known as pyrolysis pyrolysis you might have heard that right it is a closed container in oxygen free atmosphere oxygen free atmosphere most of the organic substance of solid waste can be split through the combination of thermal cracking and condensation reaction into the gaseous liquid and solid fraction right this process is also known as thermal pyrolysis or the pyrolysis right so basically here we do the splitting without the oxygen into it oxygen plays a great role in the solid waste management oxygen moisture content drying of solid waste are the major three characteristics right now there is a gas stream liquid fraction and lastly the solid fraction let's see what that generation of gas fraction containing hydrogen methane carbon monoxide carbon dioxide and various gases which are again a very harmful gases in day to day life next is liquid fraction it contains tar oil acetic acid which is also been done from the solid waste only segregated from the solid waste and lastly is the solid fraction what is solid fraction actually the generation of solid fraction containing almost pure carbon with other inert material that has entered the process right so this is how it affect a lot now let's see about the plasma pyrolysis in this method organic matter is converted into the useful by products right the intense heat is generated by the plasma enables it to disposal of all types of solid including solid waste biomedical waste hazardous waste in safe manner right so basically this will help us to generate the by products which can be helpful in your future or in other technologies right now basically pyrolysis is the thing which is the material which is done by the dumping it to sea we go into the sea we go to the some of the almost the nuclear power things nuclear bombs or nuclear materials which we are using it is dumped into the sea right what we do with that we go some kilometers into sea and we dump into the sea it does not come to the surface area of the sea so this is known as pyrolysis in this dumping into sea method is generally used right so toxic residual is very small because according to the process we do in such a way that by product is useful because organic substances are only used into it so thank you for this session i guess you have known about all the methods which are very important you have learned here basically if i recall here to the last minute revision that we have seen about what is solid waste what is the management characteristics so basically management characteristics is by collection disposal and how we do the recycling of it you have also seen the process of open dumping shredding and pulverization incineration process and you have seen the pyrolysis process these are the three important terminologies which are very much important looking towards the action of solid waste into the traditional methods and by doing all this we are just doing the land filling towards it what is land filling and why is land filling impacting towards it we will see in the future sessions so these are the things now we are going to see that what are the futuristic and innovative techniques to handle this solid waste because generation of solid waste is day to day progress scale 
we are not in a way that we generate in a one month to, to this much ton and then for the next month we are not generating it is a day to day if we consider towards the industry if we consider towards the domestic if we consider towards the hospital waste if we consider towards any other waste that is generated in day to day scale so these are all the methods which are required and ultimate we are doing the sanitary landfilling sites landfilling is basically what for 25 years to 50 years we do the disposal of the waste which is harmful we are eradicating to to that and the waste which is residue which are left we are dumping into the earth layers what will do that what will be helpful to us will it generate anything towards us or not or that is helpful to not we need to see about the landfilling question which is the major question right now okay so these are the methods which are traditionally used and you need to remember these methods and the measurements which have already been shown in the session thank you